But um, uh, when he when he ran into her, then they weren't going to arrest him, and they had to took some outsiders to actually arrest uh, Neil M Miles for taking another person's life, even though it was clear that there was enough evidence, you know, to convict him. So there is sort of an inner circle that's working there. I don't know how the relationship is, you know, how close these folks actually are. Um, we did have, you know, see uh, substantial changes with the executive branches in the, a couple years ago. And so, uh, November 4th is the, um, um, extinction, is the uh, eviction day. Uh, November 4th is eviction day. That's when everybody's getting voted out of office. So it's a political year. Maybe they're trying to make some political hay, trying to say, hey, this, you know, John Cain's been a nuisance. He's, you know, he's, he's having to stay at someone else's house. He's kind of barely hanging on by a thread. He's, at the, he's, he's on the edge. So let's just keep on pushing him and see if he, you know, just pops. And, um, and that's bullshit. So I don't know if the, he'll, they'll, at the courtroom, it would be interesting to go through the court because the court proceeding is uh, very um, not fair. As soon as you walk into the courtroom, you know, you got the the, guy, the guards right there just looking like they want to put their hands, their fucking filthy, creepy, sickly, old, fucking, short, bald hands on you. And um, um, so automatically, they kind of treat everybody like assholes as soon as you walk into the courthouse. And... Um, um, and then, then you go to before the judge who's sitting on high, sitting on high, you know, because it's all, they're pious, they're like God, right? They're, they can do no wrong, all rise for this fucking God, all sit down, you know, the bailiff will do this and do that, everybody shut the fuck up and just, and so it's, it's a dictatorship, it's a totalitarian dictatorship, the judge is, is firm, firmly in charge of every, um, everything that happens in that room. Which is, you know, that's just how it is. So, um, Lane Hawkins, <laughs> actually, Lane Hawkins, he had, uh, he took, he got political and he got to topics and he started laughing at John Cain for getting uh, arrested and said something about don't drop the soap. And he said, hey, let's all donate some uh, bail money and let's meet at the courthouse and we'll all donate a bunch of shit, put a bunch of shit in a bag and then give that to him since he is a fake piece of shit. So it's very descriptive writing, very interesting way to say things. Um, you know, want to donate bail money? Just he, he, said, he was saying John Cain's a fake piece of shit, so therefore, well, let's just give him a bag of shit and not pay his bail money. Let's keep him in jail. So then, um, you know, this is fascinating that he would actually go political and stand up for these issues. Then you have a person who identifies themselves as Barry Alexander, the fire chief of Gallatin County, and um, the uh, Lane Hawkins responds to him now. We don't know if it's actually the real Barry Alexander or not, if it's just somebody, you know, an imposter. And um, then we have little Barry Alexander, you know, saying some crazy shit. And um, and then uh, Lane Hawkins responds to him. So, like, because little, little Barry was saying crazy shit, then it kind of puts, uh, you know, Barry... Barry Alexander's credibility, um, you know, if that actually is Barry, you know, you don't know. And so the Lane Hawkins, um, he's responding to these assholes. He's just he's talking to these fucking anonymous fucking dickheads who's just posting up other people's names and shit. And he said that, uh, he was like, whoa, I never said I wasn't a piece of shit. I just found it funny that John was in jail for tampering. So he's basically saying, yeah, I said John Cain's a piece of shit, but I'm, I'm also a piece of shit, so it's cool. Right? So Lane, that's some Lane Hawkins. He was a redneck um, that was living behind John Cain's trailer who's got a big confederate flag um, that uh, uh, wanted to get in a fight with me because um, I said that Michael Jackson was a good singer, um, and um, and that's 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 been. Oh yeah, and he got pissed off and hated, didn't like whenever I was over there, and uh, you know, was drunk, was driving drunk and shit, causing a ruckus. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we buried the hatchet, John Cain and I, I feel like it was sort of like a bromance breakup, um, it's, it wasn't so much we fucking hated it, I mean, it was just kind of, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I think that's actually closer to what it was, um, than anything else, it was just, uh, the end of an era, right, and, uh, we couldn't handle our emotions, and, um, and then, and then I think it might have been just a respect thing, too, I guess maybe he thought, he felt like he could just keep on pushing me around, and then I pushed him back a little bit, and so I think he respects me 
uh, now, and so that's why I feel comfortable with him. I feel like you know I stood up to his his bullying tactics, and um, and so the um, the the similarity would be like the illegally taking the information. The he didn't. I had given him the information. Actually, I gave him my hard drive um, to put on his hard drive in order to protect my own. Um, uh, so it wasn't that it, he had legal, illegally obtained it. He just would have Ill illegally put it out onto the internet. He would just would have illegally, you know, um, disclosed what he had. Because I didn't put it on it to for him to keep. I had put it on there for me to have in case my computer looked like it was about to fail. So if it had failed, then I would have had this information right there. So that was the original purpose was I do realize that I had handed him the information. And then there are, I guess, some ways you could say that he could do whatever he wanted to do with that information once he had it. So it's a little bit different situation, I believe. I don't like to, anybody bullying anybody or any type of oppression. Um, Tommy Dunn's a fucking dickhead. He's always been a dickhead. Tommy Dunn, I remember in about 2001, Dominic Blanchett and I go to Warsaw, Kentucky, and we were waiting at BP. We were waiting for somebody. I forget who, but it didn't fucking matter. Tommy Dunn just was like, you better do this, blah, 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 and just start uh, kind of harassing us and shit. It pissed me the fuck off. I remember that. Another time I was running to Tommy Dunn, my fucking car's about to break down. I'm driving up 42, um, just past that uh, little liquor store or whatever right there on um, 127 and 42. And, uh, and I'm going like just 20 miles an hour, just chugging along, fucking smoke's coming up out of my engine, and uh, the uh, uh, Tommy Dunn turns his lights on, right, whoop, couldn't fucking pull me over as my shit's about to die, and, and, we, and we have words, but as he's about to walk away, he's like, you can turn that off, and it's like, I'm not going to turn my car off, it's going to, I'm going to be parked here, you're not going to, you know, make me fucking get towed from right here, I almost, I could probably make it to where I was going to go if you just let me be, you know, just let me drive in my hazard lights on until I get to my destination. You pull me over doesn't help anybody whatsoever. So what a fucking dick for doing that. Um, but I remember when he told me to roll the window down, I asked him about the, um, well, I don't think the ACLU says that I should have to do it. And then he was like stunned because nobody ever told him what, you know, that nobody ever questioned him that do this, do that um, type of bullshit. And so then he goes back to his quad or his quad car, comes back out and he's like, well, I don't care what the ACLU tells me, it tells, uh, 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 what, you, what rights you have to do or what you don't. When a cop tells you what to do, you do it, right? And when I tell you what to do, I'm the fucking king around here, so you're my bitch, fuck you. So, you know, amazing that, you know, if, if what they're saying is right, that he can commit crimes and he can be smoking marijuana, then Tim, I think it was Tim Miles, a guy who got like $50,000 of marijuana taken from him, he should be paid back. He should not have any charges on him, especially if you got a guy with a badge who's doing the same exact crime as him things I like about Hargis Davis, so that way nobody gets it wrong, okay? <laughs> um, Hargis Davis was, I, I met, the first time I met him was at a fair board meeting. I had videotaped him with um, some of the other fair board people there, and um, and he had never seen anything like it, right? I came out of the blue. He didn't know what was up. He didn't know who I was. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody asked any questions. They went along with their meeting. I walked out, and that was it. And, um, and then, so that was, you know, it was the first time we met. And uh, I think I might have introduced myself and shook his hand or some shit, and um, and then that was it. So actually, you know, Hargis may not give me any credit whatsoever, but I feel like I'm the one that kind of thrusted the idea right in his face. Uh, so after that had happened, I f he took over on the fair board, and uh, I remember going to the courthouse to stand up, you know, like, hell yeah, we got one of our own into power. And so, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that he had got his rightful position, which actually I don't know was... If that was fair or not, if that was like diplomatic or parliamentary procedure or not, because I think you have to have elections, right? You have to, you can't just move the seat over. You can't just somebody somebody stands up out of the chair and you you hurry up and sit in their chair. That doesn't make you king, right? As soon as the king walks out, somebody can't just sit in his chair. So, um, regardless, I thought uh, I liked how he ran the fair board, how he kept on uh, the videotape. He took videotaped all those meetings, and I thought well, that was awesome. Nobody gives a shit about what the fuck the fair board, um, you know, committee in Gadsden County is talking about. But since he put it all on video, it put it all out there and open in the public. People felt more honest, or that he was more honest, more transparent. If you had a problem with something that somebody had said, you could always go back and check the tape. You could always review what was said, what was decided, and what had gone on. 
And so, um, you know, the, uh, the the GC Video News also took on a more professional tone. It took on a more, uh, Hargis Davis isn't Clarence Davis, but he gets um, some of those connections and some of those experiences coming along with them. Um, I've never met Clarence Davis. I've never, I wouldn't even be able to point him out in a crowd. I have no idea what he looks like. I think I met Andes Davis. I think that's uh, um, uh, uh, Hargis' father. And he seems like a pretty, pretty humble guy. I like him. Um, and so... Um, yeah, so Hargis Davis, well, when he took over GC Video News, he basically bought John Kane out. He says, here, he gave him like a thousand bucks, bought him a camera, and then that was it. And once he bought him out, then he was kind of, he didn't own John Kane, but since he owned GC Video News, John Kane's natural inclination is to videotape and keep on, um, you know, doing what he was doing was sort of consistent with Hargis saying, hey, why don't you keep on doing some work there? Uh, I remember distinctly we got into an argument with um, with the sheriff at the courthouse and Hargis seemed like he just wanted to wash his hands and didn't want to make, take a side on the thing and that sort of was bullshit. He just wanted the sheriff to know that I had I was a citizen and I wasn't associated with GC Video News. And so like, you know, I don't understand like why that was the most important thing for him. Um, when that thing went down at the jail, uh, he went to go talk to him. He definitely he said he didn't want me to go with him. And so I, like, you know, I like him but a lot of I guess I don't I don't trust him. I don't know. Um, I I don't think he would, but I think he would think about, you know, um, <laughs> fucking me over. So, uh, right, so, Hargis Davis. So, yes, uh, I think he's got this, uh, the website is a political propaganda machine. I think it's only what he stands for. It's definitely not news. It's been out for how long? He doesn't capture every news. You're not even getting the house fires and the car wrecks that you was getting when you had um, John Cain doing it. It's not even close to the Gallatin County newspaper, which comes out weekly and has boatloads and shitloads of information that everybody can read. Um, we're not getting up-to-date information. We're not getting all Quran. We're not getting, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's not news. It's not, there's no way you could say that it's news. It's basically whenever Hargis Davis gets a hair up his ass and wants to, you know, cover some information and wants to do some sort of story. That's what GC Video News is. Uh, and he's not even doing it that much. He's probably not making much money of it. And it also is a way to kind of get uh, John Cain's, you know, kind of get uh, uh, sort of uh, his uh, uh, his dick in Hargis Davis's pocket. So it could have been just to you know um, um, sort of not not silence John Kane, but sort of to grab his his holster, right? Sort of grab his bridle. Uh, which is fine. Hargis Davis can, you know, have his own website. He can do his own thing. He's an American. He could be a citizen journalist, you know, as much as he wants. Um, the uh, uh, some things that you know I've noticed that the Ronnie Smith, the Ronnie Smith thing, I, uh, that didn't hit me too well. It seemed like it seemed like he was laughing at Ronnie Smith as he was getting arrested. Uh, Dot Perkins, I thought was interesting how he did that. He basically, I guess, I don't want to say he tricked her, um, but he did start just being real critical with her afterwards, and he did confront the school board, which I'm not sure how much, who has more power, the school board or the judicial system. I think that's an interesting dynamic between those, those two entities. Um, the uh, GC Video News also pro Josh Neal and Ken McFarland. They had helped them get elected. So um, you had uh, um, uh, Hargis Davis had helped Josh Neal and, and Ken McFarland get elected, which were the new executives. And so since he's invested in that, those are his guys. Those are the ones he wants to win. And now again, and we know this because Ryan Morse is talking about coming in, and he's already kind of talking a little bit of shit about him. And he's um, what I remember with Ryan Morse. The um, I haven't you know I haven't lived in Gath County in the last three years. So I have no idea if your all's lives are better or not. I would I would assume not. Y'all didn't get a YMCA. You didn't get a hospital. You didn't get free internet. You didn't get a goddamn. I don't know what the fuck you got. You got the same bullshit. The same uh, autocratic totalitarian prison run society where nobody gives a shit about one another. If one of y'all falls off, they throw you in fucking prison and give CCDC more money. Um, that's that seems to be the system that's in place. So uh, the uh, uh, Ryan Morris, if he could change that, uh, I think Ryan Morris is going to have to come up with a a platform, a political, a ten point plan that it will rival Josh Neal's plan because I believe Josh Neal will come up with a plan in order to defeat Ryan Morris. And so we'll see whose ideas are better, Josh Neal's or Ryan Morris's. Uh, 